One, two, three. Can you hear me? All right, game three, disappointing end to game two there, so we've got a bit of an extended break, but 4 p.m., just a couple of minutes away, we are kicking in for the final game three of three here in junior round and round seven, with the Brisbane Rhinos taking on the Gold Coast Stingrays for their second bout of the day, starting with our head coach of the Brisbane Rhinos, Chris Power, mate, you've jumped on commentary, now you're in pre-game interview. Uh, look, it's team one and two going at each other, they've played once today. What's the general thought process for your team in uh, this one? Um, this is going to be a big uh, difference maker this game, just going to define our season. So it's going to be a really good game between everyone. Hopefully the storm stays off so we actually get a winner, but it'll be an interesting game. Mate, does the weather with the storm potentially could shorten your game? Is that uh, at all factoring into your offensive game plans? Oh, I mean, no. Like, we'll just play how we normally play. I mean, as juniors, the pass is a special play out here, so um, we'll run strong, see what we can do, and hopefully pull out a win. Finally, mate, two players' names, offense and defense. Who's leading the charge for your Rhinos today? Uh, I think it's a bit of a collective group. Obviously, you can't go past our quarterback at Jack Lowe, but we might slip um, Zach Nielsen in there, Anthony Hearn, and even our line. Our line's looking good this year. Defensive-wise, yeah, it's a bit of a toss-up. Zach's always just putting his name out there. He's a bloody man-child out there, but he does a good job. <laughs> Finally, mate, where did you get the hat? Uh, I think it was a Roger David one. I've got a few of them. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for your time, Coach. Appreciate yeah, it. Thank you very much. Cheers. All right, we've decided to sit down for this pre-game interview because that's how Craig James rolls. President of the uh, Gold Coast Stingrays, mate, we've got a huge day of junior round here. Three junior games, two of which featuring your junior teammate. Big day. Yes, it is a big day for the boys. They um, had the first game this morning. We uh, obviously uh, playing them for having two games in one day. So uh, rested a few of the key players earlier and we'll bring out with all guns blazing this afternoon. Mate, it's uh, no secret to see that uh, you've got one of the healthiest and uh, most numerically strong teams in the league, but that's kind of on the back of all the work you've been doing in your, not only junior pro program, but your youth program, which started two weeks ago. Mate, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, well, we actually have uh, two of the youth players from last year playing in the uh, juniors competition this year, and we'll have probably another, uh, possibly 10 coming up from this year's uh, youth into the juniors next year. Uh, the, uh, the youth program, we've taken a, a little step forward this year in the um, in the organisational side of uh, actually organising a competition so that we'll have uh, competition between the, uh, the three clubs that have got established junior programs, uh, youth programs, sorry, um, and uh, inviting the other uh, other clubs that have uh, just starting to get their youth programs up and running to come along and slot into the teams. So we'll be having round robin days, bit of lunch, bit of a clinic. All, all delightful stuff to try and get the grassroots going again in Grid on Queensland. Yeah, well, it's what it's all about. It's where where the future lies. You know, if we want to, you know, get these guys eventually into the men's teams, coming up through the ranks like other sports do, then we've got to we've got to start them younger. Yeah, there's no doubt and probably in a few years time there'll be a, uh, a peewee program for uh, under 10s. There so. you go. Indeed, indeed. All fans, fantastic stuff. Looking forward to the future. Finally, mate, the uh, question everyone wants to know. Rumour on the street is that uh, Glennon Park has the best snags in GQ, mate. What's the secret? Uh, it's, it's just the uh, barbecue. We never clean it. <laughs> There we go. Craig James giving us a bit of time on the sideline. We've got kickoff only a couple of minutes away. Gold Coast Stingrays taking on the Brisbane Rhinos. Kenny Andres, I'll throw to myself back to the booth. Thank you. And thanks, me, for throwing back to me. <laughs> that was uh, Craig James talking about the secret of their snags. Not cleaning the barbecue, apparently. <laughs> it is game three of three of the junior round here in round seven. And not only are these two teams going to be battling each other, but they will be battling the elements. A little bit of rain has started to come across Glennon Park. On top of that, we have got some thunder rumbling in the background. No lightning to be seen as of yet, so this game is going ahead until that may or may not happen. I'm Kenny Andres. I'm in the box with, once again, Samuel Harkness, mate, the uh, Rhinos Colts coach. Um, watching his, uh, Chris Power and the Rhinos Juniors take on this uh, undefeated Gold Coast Stingrays Junior side who are playing for the second time today. Yeah, well, I think it's going to help them back up. It will be a good game. Last time there was only a two point difference between the Gold Coast and the Rhinos Juniors. So, it's going to be a contest going better. It will be. So, yeah, it was interesting to see the, uh, the Gold Coast Stingrays use their rotation in the first half. And, uh, sorry, the first half, the first game, I should say. To prep them for what one would consider.
consider, generally speaking, the uh, more challenging of the two games. The, uh, the number two placed Brisbane Rhinos. And we are seeing now which sides the teams will take. The Rhinos have won the toss and they've elected to receive here, which is probably key. I know deferring is kind of in vogue and, and letting your options be in the second half of the game. That could end at, in any quarter ahead of us right now. You kind of want to score, and to do that, you need the football. Yeah, that's a smart decision by So, yes, this game is a possibility to be delayed or even cancelled if the storm ahead of us here decides to take control. As I said, the, uh, it's just been thunder so far and a little bit of rain now, but the last element of those to follow is lightning, but we haven't seen it as of yet. So the uh, Rhinos, they'll get first possession, but from the sideline from head coach Chris Power, I'm already hearing a pretty key instruction. Watch out for the onside kick. It's a, it's a big feature of this team really, is throughout all their teams. So um, we're not surprised we did do a little bit of practice on that. Well, also, we talk about the possessions being gold right now. Every possession in a game that could end at any point is pretty key. So the Rhinos out ready. The Stingrays still going through their pregame power well. You see Lance Tonga Kilo coaching his second game today. And one key omission that I'm not seeing on the Stingrays sideline is number 26, Kane Mackin, who was. Uh, penalised for targeting in the first game and naturally you have a week to sort of dispute that but because they've got a second game and they couldn't find sufficient evidence on the footage <laughs> his suspension is existing, existing into this game so they've played out with one of their key defenders and kick returners I'm sure that will uh, well he was, he was just purely for, for penalty and I know we've had a lot of discussion about <laughs> suspensions and whatnot. I'm sure this will only add fuel to the fire as the final game of round seven is underway. Here goes the speedy Anthony Hearn. He's cutting back. Flags are thrown around the 30, and that's where this play will come close to ending. In fact, it'll come to a close at the 20. Sorry, check that. 34-yard line. Yeah, you really need to try and get to that one on the full as much as he could, but he let it be in, which lost him a couple of yards, but he gained them all back once he got the ball in hand. He's uh, got some good footwork, Anthony. Anthony Hearn, somebody who's completely new to the sport? Uh, no, he played last year in the Colts, and he's played some Colts this year. Uh, he's a real leader on their team and one of their captains. And we saw the penalty there going against the Rhinos. Holding penalty that moves them back. And so no one side kick. And this possession will start at the 20. Here comes Jack Lowe and his offense to try and put first points on the board. Three receivers to the left. The near side receiver is number 31, Lachlan Mathias. And this ball is lost, but then regathered, then lost again. Now into the arms of the Gold Coast Stingrays. Stingrays, they're rolling it with a bunch of blockers and making the touchdown saving tackle for the Rhinos is Jack Lowe. But <laughs> recovering that fumble, Lucas Al Frank, the second time he's done that today. Yeah, that was a tough one there. I think last time they played, Zach had two fumbles against the Stingray, so I think that maybe that's just a little bit of nerves there. The a bit of a bogeyness. Well, also on top of that, as I said, it's not raining hard, but it's enough to make that, yeah, that yeah. ball a little bit slippery. So ball protection is going to be huge. The Stingrays didn't need an onside kick to get first. Their first scoring possession, they take it away on the second play. Now straight for the end zone and a touchdown on their very first offensive play. That is Tompkins to Luke Terry, their second touchdown here in round seven. That was just a nice catch and throw. Kind of looked like they're out in the park. You know, maybe played together growing up in school and stuff like that. <laughs> sort of connection, that's what it looks like there. Real instinctive one. They can... Connected for a beautiful touchdown on the uh, other side of the field in the first game. A beautiful 35-yarder on a string. So 6-0 in favour of the Stingrays early here in the first quarter. Tompkins 
Drops it, regathers it. So we can already see how slippery this ball might be for both sides. Yeah, definitely. It's, uh, I think it also would have surprised the runners uh, with the pass so early on, especially in the weather. Um, I think I know Chris was expecting more to run heavy game. So they doing well, but I'm sure they'll adjust now. Well, we say go and run heavy with the weather. I, it is only lightly spinning, so I can understand how that affects the football, but if you're going to pass, you're going to want to try and get in early in this yeah. game. So 6 nil. Stingray is over the runners. Kane and Tompkins. Keeps his hot day going. Player of the game in the first game up against the Bengals. Number four quarterback, Kaden Tompkins. And Denton, he's still kicking in the absence of Mackin. And it's a line drive. Recovering and then is Hearn. Hearn gets sniped and taken down around the 37 there, just losing his footy somewhere around the 35. Yeah, he got to the ball much quicker this time. I think Chris would have had a word to him. Um, straight away after the first one. So, gets the yards, puts him in a nice good position to start the drive. Sometimes you've got to get a feel of the opposition kicker. First down, 10. Rhinos now trying to make up a six point deficit. And this will be another give. Up the middle they go, the same play last time, and Hearn this time holds on to the football and picks up a yard or two. We'll call it two, and that makes it second and eight. Yeah, I think we'll see a lot of running games from the Rhinos today. Um, they like to run a lot of options, so I think it's a lot. A lot of faith there in uh, Hearn, going straight back to him after the last play. Yeah, we'll try and just get his confidence back up. I think that's a smart thing to do. Second and eight. Three receivers out to the left, as you can see. And they'll give it back to him. No, it's a keeper this time for Lowe. Lowe looking for blockers. Needs to change that ball arm, but he gets, safely gets out of bounds. And that might be enough for a first down. Yeah, he, he, he likes to run. Uh, young Jack. <laughs> uh, he does like to keep the ball in hand. So uh, when he sees a gap, he definitely takes it. But he makes the right read. So if he, if he sees you, he gets smashed if he is going to keep it. He does get it off. And this will almost be a quiet day for, uh, for Jack Lowe. He's used to backing up and playing two games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's used he's to playing both. He uh, plays linebacker for the, for the Colts. So. First down and 10. A ball on the Stingrays, 39. Trips out into the right. Lowe looking, rolling out to the right, looking for the flat. And had it and couldn't hold on to it. That pass was in the midst of number uh, 88, Josh Hardaker. Yeah, he's showing a little out there, showing, showing by surprise now that they've run it a little bit more, so I'm sure they'll use a bit of both during the game. <coughs> Getting in there pretty quickly was number 35, Max Cusson for the Stingrays. He's also their backup quarterback. Played quarterback to close out the game against the Bengals this morning. Scored two rushing touchdowns of his own. 6-0. Same formation, trips out to the right. Straight back to Hearn, they go. Hearn's got a play around the waist. It's Ryan Gow, who is awfully close to winning the Player of the Game award this morning himself. He has another productive start to the day. Yeah, that was just a great defensive read by the D line there. Um, got the 14, got straight onto that really fast to try and shut that down, and he did. Real beast off the end. He's not a very big defender, but he certainly uses his quickness and, uh, to, as an attacking weapon in, to take down some of these ball carriers and quarterbacks. Sometimes that's good guys. Like we did that a lot last year. Uh, we had smaller guys and just use our speed up and just send pressure. He's off the edge again. This time he'll drop back into coverage. The pressure will come from inside there. Low has to extend the play now. We'll just decide to run with it. Picks up a first down. Still going. He's Bumping off tacklers well into the red zone flags. Back down, though, near the original line of scrimmage. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a good read. He uh, rolled out and was able to beat his man and get yards, but it'll be interesting to see what the flag's for. That was uh, Keegan 
Well Winant and the flag's been waved off, is that right? Yeah, it must have just fell out of the pocket, man. Fell out of the pocket, so that uh, play belongs well and truly to Jack Lowe. We saw uh, Keenan Winant get in there initially, number eight. Cause pressure, but Jack Lowe used his athleticism to get to the edge and turn that into a fantastic gain on the ground. First and ten inside the red zone. Ball on approximately the 16. It's another keeper to Low. Low trying to use a stiff arm. Lowers his head and drives forward. Picks up five, maybe six yards on that play from my angle. Yeah, good, good run again there. I think it was the right option there. Um, you can see on the, on the back side, there's a lot of every on either side when they're playing the trips. If they send a vertical, they've got the speed out and receiver to try and uh, score some points that way because it's one on one. So let's see if they. Try to utilize that on this drive after that five yard carry from low. Of course, as many lows on this team, three in total, two active. And another give to Hearn. Hearn rides a defender to the ground. And, and might have picked up three or four yards on that play. Thunder continues to rumble behind us here at Glendon Park in Narang. Third and two. Yeah, if they do pass, I think they will um, probably be a slant towards the towards Harry Bradford and the backside. Yeah, uh, now they flipped it, so maybe I have to look in the pass. See how they go. The trip's out to the right-hand side. You think a pass could be oncoming. That's exactly what's happening. He's under pressure. He gets rid of it over the middle. What a grab in the middle of the end zone by number 21, Zachary Nielsen. Yeah, he's got some good hands. Typically uh, DB, but now playing, he's played Colts for the last two years. And there we go. We've seen our first light of what happened behind us after that touchdown. So the score, to add to the drama, is now six to all the runners have a two-point <laughs> conversion to come. We have got to take a 30-minute suspension right now of play to wait for this Thunder to... <laughs> All right, sorry for the delay there. We've just seen play resume. We had a bit of a technical issue with one of our cameramen dealing with the elements and slipping down. Big shout out to Dan and uh, doing all the dirty work for being a cameraman for us here on live streaming Brisbane. It has gotten muddy after that short break in play. Now to update you with what we might have just missed on camera there is the Rhinos. Obviously when we took, uh, took the break in play, they scored a touchdown to uh, the PAT was next. They just tried the PAT there and it has been blocked. So we've still got a tight game, Sam. Yeah, still 6-0. Uh, yeah, just uh, unlucky, just, just hit the post there. So they were, all, but, um, they were practicing it just before Wallace. So I knew they were coming. <laughs> Mate, uh, I hate to say it because I'm, the, actually the weather has actually come good. It's still going to be wet out in the field, but the rain stopped. The sun's back out. The wind's actually died down. But with the slippery conditions, could that be the difference? <laughs> it could become the difference, yeah. It's going to be who can hit play uh, in these difficult conditions better. And a line drive here for the Rhinos. Now as I get my team list back out now that the rain has come back and heavy contact there by the Rhinos on special teams there. And they yeah. set up shop around the 25. Zachary Nielsen there getting low. Nielsen, a talented player, been around the Rhinos cult system for the last two years? Yeah, that's correct. He's uh, He started when he was 14, um, and he's made his way through last year juniors. Plays Colts for us this year too. There it is. First down and 10 for this Stingrays. Tompkins is back. Two backs in the backfield. Tompkins now looking deep again, looking for Terry. Terry's caught it in stride again. This combination has been strong. Unfortunately, his right boot hit the sideline. But that combination between Terry and Tompkins looking very, very destructive right now for the Stingrays. Yeah, really nice catch and pass there again. They've definitely got a combination. So whether they have played before together or not, um, get the feeling they have. Well, that wasn't that long in the huddle at all for the Stingrays. They're out now. It looks like they're trying to, I won't call it hurry up, but they're certainly trying to roll down quickly. And 
Tompkins again is going to try and throw. Throws off his back foot. A big play there by the Rhinos. At that time, number 33, Marcus McCarthy getting a tip on the ball. Yeah, he just that was good coverage from Marcus. He's really developed. He was a cult last year and was able to get the, in the way of the pass to also distract the receiver. Just looking at uh, cameraman Dan who took the slip before we went live. Uh, from returning from the break, he's gone to the bathroom, washed all the mud off his, uh, his shins. He's back to go, as are the Stingrays' offense. And a timeout being called here. And I think from the Rhino sideline, I think that actually might have been Coach Booker calling a timeout there. Yeah, he always tries to, uh, he helps out with all the teams. He likes to stand on the sideline and just help the younger coaches and all the coaches really at the club to uh, help us learn more as he's far more experienced. Obviously saw something there that he didn't like in that matchup. And another good news, it looks like uh, Loralee Clifford, who was injured early in the first game this morning, yeah, she's kitted up and looks like she might be ready to go again yeah, that's here in the second game. Very good to see. Uh, you never want injuries in this game. and uh, There's been plenty today, so hopefully there's no more. Fingers crossed. So Rhino's time here. Another thank you to Urban Extreme. Ski and Adventure Park for sponsoring round seven and our junior rounds here in the midpoint of the season. Second down and ten. From the looks of it so far, it could come down to who can stop the other team first. <laughs> Quite possibly. And the Stingrays, despite the wetter conditions, they have no intentions on changing this offense. They're happy to throw this downfield. Two backs. Same look. Terry fighting for the ball. Comes back for it. And might have got himself a defensive pass interference. Lachlan Matthias on the coverage that time. But Terry, we'll just see a perfect view of it there. Has to go back for it. Has to go through the defender. So he's certainly got a case. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, but no, that was like, it's definitely, he's definitely going to try and get that court pass there all day. So there we go. Automatic first down after that play. So whether he's catching balls or not, this uh, Tompkins to Terry connection <laughs> continues to be prosperous. And you can see Matthias frustrated with himself. Um, they've actually put him on because he wasn't the corner on that side before. So I think they've put their preferred corner on to match uh, top his speed. Terry proving to be a downfield threat. Let's see if they go for the third time in Derry's direction. Checking off now. Changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Both backs oh. going to pass protect. They're going to go to Terry again. This time double coverage and he would have threaded the needle had Terry been able to hold on. It falls incomplete. Second down and ten. Yeah, that one's on the receiver there. That was a good throw. As you say, if the receiver can touch it, he can catch it. Exactly right. So, uh, proven to be a favourite. As we still see the 6-6 scoreline, both teams scoring a touchdown, both teams failing more than the Rhinos, a PAT attempt, and the Stingray is a two-point touchdown attempt. As we look now, another deep pass attempt. Tompkins flushed out of the pocket. He's just going to have to roll with it now. And he'll find the sideline, but not after, not before picking up about five, six yards. Yeah, that was the right play for the QB there. The, it definitely, the pass options weren't open. So he decided, well, let's run it. The pressure was coming through by Josh Hardacre. Gets it out of bounds, and we'll see where they mark that down. It looks like it was indeed a five-yard gain. Third down and five now. Oh, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna pretend like I didn't see something out to the left corner of my eye. <laughs> Certainly wasn't the L word. Third down. And are they gonna run here on a third down conversion? Did he get it? This will be close. Finally handing the ball off, taking the first Stingrays carry is number 36, Connor Gru, the older brother of our <laughs> scorekeeper today. Yeah, he was just short there, as we can see. Good angle. Very good hang on. Definitely going to go for it though. Half a yard short, or why wouldn't <laughs> they? 
Winston Killer telling him to hurry up and pick up the intensity. Under center now, this has got to be a sneak. And they've got a good push on the quarterback here. The Rhinos have stood tall on fourth and short and have got a turnover on downs. Really good play there by, I believe, Josh Hardacre. Getting through, it was definitely an all-out blitz. On top of that, the D-line just dominated the offensive line there. And then to stop it... To stop it there, as much as you need that outside rush, you also need those interior guys to really man up and stand up for you there. Yeah, that was a real team play there. So that'll be huge. I'm actually a little surprised it hasn't psyched up that Rhino sideline a little more. That was a huge play in the grand scheme of things. You said yourself, could it be the first team to put a stop to him? To, to find a stop, I should say. First down and 10. The Rhinos now. Scored last possession. They will fake it. Low. Low will keep it now. Breaks a tackle. Looks for a block on the outside. He's got the left-hand sideline. Comes up to Sawada, and eventually Sawada pushes him out of bounds, but that's a huge play for Low on the ground. Yeah, really good run there by Jack Low, and some good blocking out there by the receivers, uh, especially, I believe, Lockie Mathias and Zach Nielsen. Able to keep some room there. Slippery tries to stay in bounds. A little too dissimilar to... Terry a couple plays ago. No, not at all. First down and 10. Ball at the 38-yard line. <laughs> well, knows they did score their touchdown through the air. Otherwise, they've not used it. And quarter? that could be the end of the quarter. And surprisingly, we're only into the second quarter. Yeah. <laughs> that uh, that stoppage did come into the first. So, well, the runners were in an empty set there, so yeah, definitely right. looking for a pass or yeah. maybe right. trying to clear the field so Jack can run. Can run indeed. And I'm just I didn't get any notifications from the referee suggesting that we're going to play uh, shortened quarters. So these should be regulation times. Another eight minute quarter ahead of us. The score is still drawn. We're still tied. Leading into the second. Six apiece. Definitely not a good game without a train going past at some field. Every <laughs> <laughs> fields can't. Look, the Thunderbaps and Morton Bay. For first and ten Rhinos now running left to right on your screen. Low, still in that empty set. No other running backs with him. It is a pass play. He's under pressure, though. Looking downfield, instructing people to block. Evades the first rush. Now he's circling back and going to the middle of the field. He'll be taken down for a sack. Good pursuit by the Stingrays. Did not give up on the rush. Making a play there is number six, Solomon Thurston. Yeah, good job by the defense there um, to come off. I noticed that Josh Hardick, um, he pulled out of the block because he didn't want to give away a block in the back penalty. You can see there. Better a sack than 15 yards. Good job there. Not to get wrong-footed. Came back and took the quarterback down by the hips and boot laces. Not the only Thurston to wear number six at this club. His oldest sister, Tiafi, has come back this season, oh, retaining her number six for the women's side. It's a bad snap, and it's also fumbled and recovered by the Rhinos. Almost, almost drama there, but the recovery by Hearn on the exchange there. Yeah, just I think that's where you'll see the slippery ball come into action. I think that won't be the last fumble we'll see from either team today. In conditions like this, so much concentration, so much more concentration has to go on the quarterback and running back for very simple things like the handoff. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. And maybe even consider under center just so they can try and get more control on the ball. I mean, look, it's, I'd say close to 80% of teams now run almost exclusively in shock on a pistol. Have you guys trained a whole lot under center? Uh, we do, yeah. We've done a little bit, um, just in case. There you go. It'll be a reverse now. Going up the left hand sideline with space. Sawad is in pursuit, tries to take him out and does. But coming around the outside, Zachary Nielsen, the uh, third year man, making his presence fell on offense now. Got a touchdown and now a long gain on the ground. Yeah, a little play we've practiced a couple times. Um, we do use it in uh, both Cold Sand Juniors there. Sawada pursuing him down. Sawada sideline to sideline. 
his efforts as a linebacker. Fourth down now. Knocked out a bit earlier than probably hoped. Trips right. Hearn in the backfield. They won't go to him. It'll be low keeping it. He's got the first down easily. And now he's picked up some extra pepper on top of that. Takes this ball all the way down to the 28-yard line. Yeah, really good crack block there from Josh Hardaker. You see him come straight in from receiver. And he comes in and takes out the D end. Yes, yeah. That is not easy to do, but he does it perfectly. That's what sets up Lloyd for the big run. First down. Rhino's marching now. A couple of big plays stacked together. And a false start now will add a blip to this otherwise impressive drive. Nielsen, that's on pinged for not looking at the ball. Is that part of the danger of going to, to a hard count? When uh, you've got the role, you know, you kind of got a team that's already thinking go forward and then I get, something like this happen? I kind of get the feeling they actually didn't get to the count. I think Zach just saw his man come over the line and jump. You've got a big side, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, cost them five yards. Still first down, but now it's first and 15. This time, once again, a keeper four low once more. Tries to lower the boom, picks up a couple yards. We'll get a close, probably a yard or two short of the original line of scrimmage. Yeah, I think uh, we're going to see a deeper pass coming up probably in the next play. They're playing uh, cover zero at the moment, the Stingrays, so we'll try and utilise that. They do have a call there, the juniors, to uh, change it to verticals if they need to. For those who might be new to the game, cover zero, Matt, talk us through it. Uh, basically just man-on-man, -man, contain, and uh, look how we play. It's just um, and dropping the safety, the safety's in the box, so... So more or less, for those who might be watch rugby league, you're pretty much you're playing without a fullback. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Putting all your attention to the front side of the defense. There Low, it there was the deep pass he was talking about, but he's flushed out of the pocket. We'll have to try and do it himself. The defense wins this one, chasing him down from the backside. It was a linebacker, Max Cusson. Yeah, that was just good play by the Stingrays to get to him. He couldn't set, and they just had two men get through the middle of the O line and get in. And also. On. Keegan Wynand also contributing on that tackle. Third down and long. And looks like cycling in the play now is Matthias. Matthias or Matthias? Ah, uh, Matthias. Matthias with the TH, right? We've got about third and 14 now for the Rhinos. Both teams possibly stalling here as they get closer to the other team's end zone. And this might be a delay game. That's what it is. Runners taking too long. Third and 14, third and 19. Is there any difference in your play call, mate? Oh, I think they'll probably go the same play call. I think if they don't get there, I wouldn't be surprised if Chris sends the team out for field goal. What's the longest field goal that your uh, this junior team's taken so far? Juniors, I think it's maybe 25 they got one from. Yeah, so be, might be making, <laughs> yeah. setting some new records here, depending <laughs> on the result of this play. Third and 19. Low looking deep. He's throwing long for the right-hand sideline. Man has a step. Nielsen reaches and can't keep possession of the ball on the way down. Yeah, it looked like he had it there. Yeah. Um, but it's just come out as he's fallen. Yeah, Glennon Park gets a pass break up on that one. And he gets it there, but loses it as he comes to the ground. The ground can't cause a fumble, therefore yeah. it's an incomplete pass. You need to keep possession of all these rules about catching and <laughs> deems a possession nowadays. It looks like they're going for it. Fourth down. No field goal unit. They will go for it. Now they've uh, now Solomon Thurston back playing the deep third. They're going for the reverse with Nielsen. Nielsen, he's got a lot to do. Breaks the first tackle and he will be stopped well short of the first down. This will be a turnover and downs. These two teams exchange turnovers on downs. Yeah, well, it, the reverse worked earlier and I think Stingray's uh, clearly fixed the, the, um, the gaps there. So they're well prepared for that. Good tackle. In many ways, is that almost a rare example of a low-risk, high-reward sort of play? 
You know, you keep it on the ground, you don't really turn over, turn over. Yeah, you might stuff, it might not work, but there is upside there. Yeah, I think that was just the way they were looking at it. They, um, If they didn't complete the pass, realistically, it was going to be where it was anyway, so... First down and 10. Score's still tied. Midway through the second. Probably towards close to half time. Two minute warning, probably only a couple of minutes away. First down. And it'll be a run for the Stingrays. Cutting back, going the other direction. Is a new player, and he gets down the right hand sideline for a huge play. Yeah. Connor Grew. Really good run there. He was able to beat uh, the defensive end, Darcel to him above there. He just got past him. Forced him to reach, he missed, and that's what opened the gap. And Connor Grew They're doing some damage. And that is the uh, the danger of a lack of, you know, no backside pursuit there. You're going to make sure the backside defenders need to come back in case that play cuts back. Oh, definitely. And here's another pass here for Tompkins. Oh, that Terry, I'm guessing, almost making another a miraculous catch. Yeah, he's beating his man. He's beating his man. I'm wondering if they'll make some halftime adjustments to try and counteract that. He's a good young receiver, though. It would have been a hell of a catch had he reeled it in. Second down and ten. This time it's a give to Gru. Gru, plenty of space down the left hand side, cuts back. And breaks the tackle now. Now he's going. Can he take this all the way? He's broken free of the last defender. Got a Gru with flags thrown. Currently has a touchdown. Let's see if it stands. Yeah, that's just a flag for taunting there. You can see when he points to the player. Um, but that, either way, it was still a really good run. And a poor missed tackle here, um, which took out their safety in the end. There's, that's where it is there where the flag comes. That is a possibility now. Now, if you're going to celebrate, you've got to wait till after the touchdown. Possibly an inexperienced error here. Right there, right on the seven yard line. So we'll soon see if this touchdown stands. The referees are uh, meeting and deliberating about it. <coughs> I'm seeing some head shakes. Pete Solich, what does he have to say? And now you can't hear that. The touchdown will not stand before the play and before the touchdown scored. Unsportsmanlike conduct for the point before he scored there, which means that this allows the touchdown and also negates 15 yards. Yeah, it's, um, you could see as soon as it was short, I think that was the call they were going to make. Um, I think especially like earlier in the season, I believe Stingray's Ravens Colts game. Yes, exactly. There was a couple of that where it wasn't called, so um, I'm sure they probably went over that and, and found what they need to do. So... Lost a touchdown, but I think he's young. It's going to be an, it's an experienced play. Like if he keeps running like that, though, I'm sure he'll find the end zone again. Especially, yeah, especially uh, players who are new to the sport, rugby league in particular. That sort of stuff isn't penalised. Yeah, exactly. So uh, I'm certainly not used to it. So that's wiped off the board. We've still got a tied ball game, despite the impressive run by Gru. Speaking about impressive runs, here goes Tompkins, and he'll run this out of bounds. Yeah, to keep himself safe from getting hit. I think that's a smart decision there. He wanted to pass that one there, but the pressure is in his face early there by Darcel Tumovave. Darcel, as he's known amongst the uh, the runners camp, I hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, uh, he's a good young player. He's only 15 himself. Um, he played last year really fast and good with D-line. He's um nephew of Joe Tumovave from the men's team. Makes sense. The runners blitz again. It's getting his first carry, his number 81. And Lachlan Mackay, he's still fighting for it. Did he get over? One referee says so. I've got one touchdown signal. Well, let's take a look here. The, ref the rest of the referees seem to believe he was down. And there's one flag, so let's hold the phone here. And yeah, by all means, he's over the goal line. Oh, let's definitely. see if the flag. And he did not. The penalty is going against the Stingrays for holding. So that's their second disallowed touchdown of this drive. Yeah, um, I didn't see the whole line in play, but uh, definitely there would have been a hold there if the ref has called it. 
Um, another good run, though, so they're definitely going to stick to that. They've got weapons both passing and running. So. Yeah, multiple weapons on the ground now. Mackay, and also another running back. And there's our official two-minute warning. So two minutes remaining in this official timeout. The, uh, it's Peter Solich reminding the players that it's official timeout so they don't <laughs> need to go to the sideline. <laughs> yeah, I think that's just that's just good. Like, it's for the juniors, so he's got to... Sometimes when they're new to the game, it's the safest way to remind it. That's what the refs have been so doing good. two minutes remaining in this first half. The last team to score will surely be heading in. With a significant momentum advantage. Look at all the time here, and it's not enough. The Rhinos take him down. Coverage sack on the play by the Brisbane Rhinos. Flags are down. Yeah, that flag came just before the contact, so I'm assuming they're going to call holding, possibly on the Let's offense. see if we can find a hold amongst all this. Is they'll decline the penalty, they'll take the field position. So, in our sport, you have the option in most cases to accept or decline penalties depending on the situation. In the situation where the Rhinos come away with a positive play, they would rather decline the penalty and take the result of the play, especially if that means that the downs keep on moving. And there was more yardage too, so Chris Stephen exactly. was like, uh, <laughs> doesn't often happen, that. No, <laughs> not really. Third down and forever. You don't even see the down counter. You barely see it in screen there. Let's see if they look for Terry for another big play here. Protection's better. They're looking for Terry. He's not underneath it, though. Two rhinos where another of them get to that incomplete. This will bring up a long fourth down. Yeah, they put Sam Lowe directly into 82's sight, playing him deeper to try and stop that pass there, as he seems to be the, the main target for the young quarterback. And, uh, yeah, when you're ha having as much... Ooh, oh, oh. Referees might have just saw. No, nope. they didn't see anything. Neither did I, nor you, <laughs> Sam. No one's looking at the left corner no. <laughs> of this field. <laughs> As uh, the Rhinos take a timeout here. And uh, oh, sorry, the Stingrays, my apologies, who want to think about how they're going to handle this fourth down. And, uh, well, the Rhinos prove that they're willing to defend the long bomb to Terry, so they're going to have to try and find some production elsewhere for a much needed 20 plus yards here on fourth down. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see what they do here. Um, they're bringing a running back on, I believe. So maybe they are going the run. And uh, while we have a timeout here, another big thank you to Urban Extreme Ski and Adventure Park. It can be found in Kendra. All different sort of stuff, especially with school holidays coming up, Sam. You don't have any kids, not that we know of. No, I don't have any kids. <laughs> but, only 22, uh, <laughs> only 22. But, but a wonderful place to, uh, to bring your kids during these school holidays they've got. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, inside indoor skiing options, they've got parkour options, they've got Ninja Warrior setups there, so you can try to test your sort of fleet of foot skills. Yeah, I might make my way there in the Christmas holidays, I think, for myself. <laughs> Please video it if you do, mate. <laughs> so, plenty of good stuff. Each two players from each game are getting awarded uh, two for one ski lesson deals or one hour park passes. Big thanks to Urban Extreme for hooking our junior division up. Fourth down now. What have they got in store for the Rhinos? Or will we see a third a turnover and down? And they try to go to the screen unsuccessfully. And now the Rhinos, they will get the ball back. And that is back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back turnovers on downs. Yeah, it was an interesting play call there. Go to screen on fourth and long. I thought they were going to go deep. But you can see on the right side, they actually Rhinos have put on Jack Lowe. The quarterback to help cover uh, the, ball back the young defense. receiver over there, I believe. 82, is it? Indeed, yeah. Derry. And uh, that's got to be frustrating because we, we need we can't forget that the, the Stingray scored twice on that <laughs> drive, but yeah. were negated by penalties, one of which was a really simple one in, in the taunting penalty. Yeah, that was just an so opportunity gone begging. Certainly did enough to score, just not enough to stop themselves. And it's a bad snap, and Jack Lowe's going to improvise and take it forward and just try to negate the loss of yardage might have got back to the line of scrimmage not taking any timeouts here so I think Chris will be happy to take it to half time Paul with the team capable of kicking field goals no thought of trying to drive it into field goal range I think their thought at the moment is just uh, don't give the ball back to the Stingrays in this weather yeah, probably they, a fair just, call. they did have two touchdowns disallowed so <laughs> <laughs> they, they probably consider themselves extremely lucky yeah. to get away with no points <laughs> on that drive Time ticking down inside the final. 30 seconds now, it appears. The Stingrays 
they didn't use their timeouts either, so they're probably happy to go in with the draw. And we will likely see a shortened half time. Yeah, that's the way it looks. The Rhinos. Killing the clock. Probably waiting for the referee to give them the warning of 10 or 5 seconds left. There it is. They'll jack low. I don't know if it was intentional, but he's keeping it himself. Will he stay in bounds? He'll try to, and he'll step out of bounds there. Was awfully close to breaking that. Is it a first down? It looks like it just might be. Clock stopped. Interesting cooler. I thought that was a referee there telling the play, laying down the law for the players, saying that the next player to, to curse will be sitting on the sideline. And uh, no, it was actually one of the assistant coaches from the Stingrays. So... <laughs> Credit to them, and that might be a timeout to the Rhinos here. Rhinos with only a couple ticks, and it says one on our screen clock. Ours is only a guide. Uh, with only a couple ticks left in the clock, they might want to try and make a play here. Uh, I think with the, the clock stopped, yeah, they'll either go for it or they will take a knee. I think that's the two options they're thinking about yeah, now. Yeah, but why would you time out to take a knee? I think just to tell them. I don't, I don't know if Jack's ever taken a knee before. <laughs> <laughs> so 22 seconds are left on the clock. So that's enough time for the Rhinos to, uh, I think they've got one timeout left after this. Yeah. So they could probably try to go half and half here, try to pick up about 20 yards on the first play and then end zone on the next. Yeah, well, Chris being a special teams guy, you can never rule, it. <laughs> uh, never rule out a special teams play. So, players now. Ward has been told to get out. Well, we've only seen one... Uh, Snap that's been a bit low in this game so far, which is good considering the weather. Big rubber forward, unlucky, just going to get down. So, tell you what, that's pretty dark in the screen, but it's not as bad. That's a little closer there on that shot there to show you what the players are dealing with. Now, let's see what they've got. And a flag's been thrown. The tension continues to grow. And that might have been there for the offense not letting the defense get set. Nope, false start. False start on the offense. Now marching back five. Definitely going a deep pass by the look of where they took their steps. <laughs> so I'm surprised. Solomon Thurston still is only about 10 yards away from the ball here. They're going to trust their man coverage to hold up. And they'll go the reverse to Nielsen. Is it a reverse pass? Yes, it is. He's thrown along. It's a duck in the air. It's hanging up there. And it's a bit of a dual possession. One by the Rhinos. And that gets him down to the 20. And a timeout taken. Their third and final timeout for the Rhinos. Flags come thrown from the uh, opposite side of the field. Yeah, I saw something coming when I saw Anthony Hearn line up at wide receiver where he's never been wide receiver. So <laughs> I knew something was coming and I had the feeling that with Zach's arm they would attempt to throw there. Oh, hang on. 12 might be in for a bit of trouble here. That's uh, Harvey Butler. And uh, I don't know if it's looking too far into there. I saw it. The referees now have just suggested a punch has been thrown. Oh, wow. We could be looking at an ejection. Let's take a look on replay. He's, he's coming off. The coach yep. is going to take him off it's anyway. 12. And he looks like he's going to get a stern talking to. Let's just watch the end of the play here. The number 12, Harvey Butler. And just watch as he gets up here. Yeah, it's hard to argue that one. Yeah, the uh, footage doesn't lie on that one. <laughs> and there we go. Half distance to the goal on the end of the catch here. So if they weren't in field goal range, they certainly are now with very few t with very few ticks on the, on the clock. I mean, what do you do? Do you just try to take the points now or do you try to go for a play here? It looks like they're going to take a play first time and I think if there's enough time on the clock, they'll take the field goal, the second option. Harvey Butler just got a stern talking to on the sideline there in regards to his behavior and giving up that penalty. Was that officially ejected? Well, no, they've got striking, and I didn't hear the term ejection, so yeah. interesting. I thought striking was an automatic ejection, yeah. so obviously not. Well, the coach wasn't happy with it, so I think for the rest of the game he might be out anyway, so. Well, they're going to go for a play here. 12 seconds of the clock we've got on our screen. It was a pretty quick timeout. 
Lowe is under pressure. He's got to get, he's got to make a decision here and not get sacked, and does get that ball thrown out safely. The worst thing he could have done there was take a sack. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Looks like he's staying in. Well, after having a kick blocked on the their last PAT, I mean, is the confidence perhaps just not there to try to land a field goal from longer out? Yeah, well, I think the thought may be also that they um, it's going to be more than a field goal in it. Interesting with the way things are going, it's been turnover after yeah. turnover. If it was available, I'm surprised they wouldn't consider it. Empty set now, and. And that's Hearn now lining up at the position you claim that he's not super familiar with, a wide receiver. Probably more of a tight end, to be fair. Yeah, this is protection here. And Low rolls out to his right under pressure. He's going to have to try and get rid of it. He might just take the sack here, and this is a huge play. Huge play there by Gal. Yeah, really good play there. Uh, that was just a great defensive play that stopped that out. And that play will... See us to the half. Huge plays by both defenses right now to keep the score unchanged going into halftime. The score remains the same from our uh, break and play from lining a six all. Stingrays and Rhinos here in week seven. Kenny Andres here as well with Samuel Harkness. We're going to take a short break in this shortened halftime. We'll be back on the other side of it here for GQT. Ready to go as more unexplained... Oh, hang on. Yeah, We've got a whistle come. from the referee. Don't know if it's good or bad news. Between you and I, Sam, I think this game might be finishing early. Oh, the, the players are putting their helmets on. Well, the referees are coming to the sideline. Yeah. No? Oh, one, one pointed that way. <laughs> All right, game on. <laughs> we're all just sitting there in silence, wondering <laughs> if they, the referees are seeing what we are seeing. We're probably kind of glad they weren't. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I am for sure. Six minutes, six minute quarters, six point ball game. Six points apiece. Yeah, really important for both teams to start strong out of the gate in this second, uh, second half because it could could be a deferring factor in this game. I would suggest that either team, and I know we probably emphasize this at the start of the game, but I think it's even more relevant now. If you've got the ball, you need to score and you need to score fast. Definitely looking in the background, <laughs> I think that's what they need to do. And I think there's no time to be conservative now. I think uh, if you've ever got a 50-50 decision, you've got to kind of take the aggressive option. Definitely. Rhino's kicking off. First team with possession it will be the Gold Coast Stingrays. Scores are tied at six all after halftime. Unchanged from the first break. Returning this ball now, looking good with ball in hand, is Noah Hull. Another one of the players who played Colts last year for the Stingrays. And looking at my roster, that's almost half the roster has got some sort of organised play, football playing experience. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, that's uh, that was a nice return there. I was wondering if it was a good decision to not let it get to the touchback, but he did get past that yard line and got to the 30, so turns out it was. And every bit gets you close to the end zone right now is probably helpful. First down and 10 now for the Stingrays. I think we'll see some passing game towards Terry out on that wide receiver. And the rain has gone though. That's one good piece of news, particularly for the Stingrays in their high-flying offense. And a run there from... Uh, I think that might have been Noah Hull again. No, number 36, my apologies. Connor Grew, who could have scored a... Could have scored a touchdown earlier in the first half, but unfortunately a learning experience instead. Yeah, well, like we said, it's, uh, he's only new to the game, so I think he will learn from that, and I don't think we'll ever see him make that mistake again. And one would certainly hope so. And bouncing back now. This is the quarterback who tried to pull the ball back. Seeing that his running back was in trouble, Tompkins takes that forward for a couple of yards. And then getting a replay now. And I can... 
yeah, getting looks... a replay now from the staff. It was our lovely director, Sam. Just checking in with me. Yeah, it looks like a little zone option play there. Good read. Got yards. And actually gets a few more yards. Gets actually more yards than I expected on there. It's about third and four remaining now. Probably closer to third and three. Just getting reports via the phone that apparently the AFL Grand Final was a ripper today for any of those AFL fans. Who well, I imagine we'll be watching the AFL and not our live stream today. Grew with a nice spin move, unfortunately falls to a knee. And he can tell that he's frustrated about it. Yeah, <laughs> that was just unlucky there. <laughs> he got the spin move and knee just touched the ground. It's one heck of a circle button right here. And just sets it up. Whoop! And the knee touches the ground there and <laughs> in our sport, he's, he's definitely not happy about it. In our sport, once you're, uh, or at least particularly in our league, once your knee or any part of your body other than the palms of your hands and the soles of your feet touches the ground whilst in possession of the football, you are tackled. Uh, yeah. That's up. Well, it's, uh, we'll call that a miscue on the punt team and it has been down there by the Stingrays. The runners need to understand what's the circumstances here. Nielsen eventually realizes what's going on. Yeah, it was a uh, really short for the a step back for the punt. Like only a couple yards there, always looked like it was going to be a fake. I think it's safe to say that probably wasn't intent the intended <laughs> result of the punt. It's, I think it's hit the shin of the boot or, or something like that. Yeah. The the shin or the top of the boot. I think they're trying to work out if Josh Hardacre had touched it. I believe it was, or possibly Sam Lowe. Well, let's maybe possibly take a look at that again. Because we'll see if we can spot any Ronos touching the football before it is regained by the Stingrays. I know it went close, but looking at it live, I think it had gone past his fingers, and then he realised, oh, no, I can't touch this ball right now. <laughs> <laughs> Time is currently stopped. And, we'll, uh... and the Stingrays there. They're going to say the Ronos have touched that ball. So therefore making it live for the Stingrays to recover. So probably the least conventional way of getting a first down, yeah, but it is effective. Was, uh, uh, yeah, well, I'd like to see the replay again, but obviously the ref had the best vision there, so he would have had, uh, made the correct call. Certainly a... Let's see if we can sneak a replay in here before the Stingrays come back out. And let's see if we can spot anywhere where Rhino's has touched it. That is... Or it may not be him. It might actually be Nielsen. Hence why he uh, okay. possibly gets the tackle back. Anyway, back to live football. Oh. The Rhinos, they're forced to recover. They're forced to fumble and have recovered it. This game just keeps twisting and turning. Yeah, I think I think uh, Chris will be happy. He just got even a little bit more field position, even though he might have had a mini heart attack there for a yeah. second. And how about that and the recovery there? I can't quite make it out. Is that 14, perhaps, or... Uh, Number 41. Rob Tullock, perhaps? Oh, it looks like it might have been. Only recovered. Fantastic job. And good job by our director, Samantha, there for getting us both the replay of the punt and sticking with the live action to give us that from recovery. Now, despite the lightning in the distance, this game's pers persisting low. Rolling out to the right. He's got plenty of space. He's racing defenders now to the first down. And there is flags thrown back near the line of scrimmage. Yeah, late flag there. I'm um, wondering if they are looking at block in the back or maybe holding. And, well, maybe a block in the back there. Yeah. Called it on Josh Hardacker. Yeah, it was that little crack crack block again. And he just timed that one just a little bit off that one. You've got to be careful there, those situations. The general rule is if you can't see the defender's eyes, it's a bad block. Yeah. Interested to see if they'll go back to that reverse or if they'll look to pass it or keep it in Jack Lowe's hands and run. Well, it has been the most productive form of offense for them. It's a low snap picked up by Lowe. Lowe now oh. tries to jump forward, losing his footing and effectively takes a sack there. So it will be second and even longer. Yeah, it definitely looked like a pass play setup. It was just, uh, it looks like he tripped over his own feet and 
Unlucky there. Probably got close to second and 23 here now. Definitely going to try and air it out, I believe. Well, I think the Rhinos might be starting to realise the, uh, the situation. And it'll be a pass, a long pass, but there's nothing but Stingrays underneath it. Picked off though by the Gold Coast Stingrays. Right hand side, coming away with that intercept is Ezekiel Kautai. Yeah, it looked like receiver there, Harry Bradford, just sort of stopped running. I think he thought the ball wasn't going to him and stopped on his route. As you can see, he just sort of slows up and yeah. well, makes the tackle, though, at least, for his mistake. The quarterback had probably too much faith in the wide receiver then, and the wide receiver didn't have enough faith in the quarterback. Yeah. Harry Bradford, the younger brother of Bradford, played Henry Bradford, is it? Uh, Mitchell Bradford. Mitchell Bradford, yeah. my apologies. Quarterback for your side. Correct. They uh, combined for a nice touchdown last week. And they did. Stingray is now back with a lot of energy. Here goes Mackay. Mackay finding plenty of space. And he's lost the ball, recovered there by Terry. <laughs> Both teams making mistakes. Both teams letting each other off the hook. Yeah, definitely with, with this, uh, uh, with the weather that it has Good come through. Uh, it looks like there's going to be plenty of fumbles, so they're really going to have to hunt on that ball tight. But Terry cleaning up. He's been all over the field today on offense. Yeah, he is. A real Mr. Fix-It. Now we've got an injury timeout here for the Rhinos. Haven't got... Can't quite pick up the number on him. It looks like it might be Sam Lowe. Could be wrong, though. Two minutes, ten seconds remaining in this third quarter. Yeah, it looks like... And yeah, that's Sam Lowe. Sam Lowe. He's going to walk off the field. <coughs> and Coach Booker out there as well for a bit of moral support. This will be a really important drive based on the, the background the weather. I'm putting it out there. I think the referees are doing everything they can to just get through this game. Get through this game. <laughs> well, it's not over the top. It, is, it looks like it is in the distance. So I think is, they're yeah, trying to I give I think it. it's certainly the storm that's past us. Yeah. Moving in the other direction, to be fair. But either way, every drive becomes an important drive. In terms of points. This thing rose, two receivers out to the right. It'll be a keeper here for Tompkins. Tompkins against the rest oh. of the defense. And the biggest hit of the day is made there by Josh Hardacker. Yeah, Josh, he's not afraid of contact. He actually played Colts last year. And um, he's, uh, he's had a, ha a tough couple of months. Um, but he's come through and he's playing really good this season and made a big hit there. You can see Kane and Tompkins there shaking off. He has, to be fair, he's run out of bounds. He's played self position for the rest of the game. I think he's aware now <laughs> that he needs every bit of yardage he can get and takes the hit there. Yeah. And what a hit. Josh is one of those guys who just loves contact. Oh, obviously. Blitz here by the Rhinos. It's a successful one. Gets him in the backfield. A well-called blitz and a well-executed play. It looks like Darcel Tuamavave with the tackle there. <laughs> Trying to replicate his, his uncle, who's a legend around the Rhinos. Yes, yes, indeed he is. Third down now. Rhinos with a huge defensive play following a big hit as well. Stingray is going long now. We'll shovel it out to uh, Connor. And oh, he's short of one touchdown so far. He's dancing and prancing his way forward. Connor grew. Yeah, just good awareness there by the quarterback to get it out and uh, give his running back a little bit of room to run. Possibly a receiver, sorry, who's come around. And they've done that little motion, I'd say, close to 70% of the time on offense there. They use it both as a form of pass protection, but also as a little bit of an escape valve right there. Yeah, the quarterback's almost, in trouble. Almost a good check down on the play. It's 
interesting, uh, interesting little wrinkle to their offense. I'm a fan of it. Looking like we could be at the end of the third quarter now. Keep in mind it was sh short in quarters. Tompkins has plenty of time looking for the end zone. Almost intercepted. We would have seen another red zone opportunity taken away by one of these two defenses. Yeah, Lockie Mathias there will be filthy on himself for dropping that one. Being a receiver actually has his preference. So. <laughs> well, isn't that interesting now? We've seen a defender <laughs> make a miraculous receiver catch. Now a receiver make a bonehead defensive drop. <laughs> that's just, that's football, everyone. I think those two might have found their uh, other callings. <laughs> Nonetheless, still a good play to break up the pass. Oh, definitely. They've struggled to and stop Terry updated. all day. 26 seconds remaining in this third quarter. Russell on the backfield, but the give is to Mackay. Mackay takes it. He's got plenty of space down the other side. He's going to bounce it to the outside. The Stingrays! They've gotten in, finally, for the go-ahead score. No flags on the field. Touchdown will stand. Yeah, that was just really good footwork and uh, really good special winners by the runner there. Really important play, especially in the context of the game with the weather that we have. And finally, they've gotten in there three times. <laughs> in the last couple drives have been denied twice. Almost picked off the play before. They come back and score there on a 20-yard scamper by Mackay. Yeah, this is going to be an important conversion. And they get the two points. Score's currently 12-6 now, the Stingrays. So we'll add maximum difficulty to the Rhinos if they can add two points here. Pass, they don't have the middle open man and another key drop. And that pass was aimed at Sammy Paludin, but he can't bring it in. 12 6, the score remains. Yeah, that could be an important drop if it comes down to it because I know Chris will definitely take the PAT if he can even scores up. And you can see there's Glennon Park on your screen lights on the full ball. On the night, the rain has gone away. This is the Thunder. Maybe a really important drive here for the Rhinos on offense and Stingrays on defense. They get a stop, I think Stingrays will grow a lot of confidence out of it. And Rhinos will lose some if they aren't able to get into the red zone and try and get some points. Well, in a, a game where both defenses have been dominating, when you get that go-ahead score, as a defender, you're definitely in the, uh, the driver's seat right here. Ah, oh, 100%. Tell... Here, Chris telling them watch the onside kick a little too. And I, I wouldn't be if I was the. Uh, I wouldn't be if I was the thing, right? I'd be driving them down and making them work for everything. This should be one of the last plays of the third quarter. Here goes that Nielsen. Nielsen looking for space. Picked up a block. He's actually got a blocker on the outside now. He's going to try and outpace the defender to the sideline and gets chased down by Sammy Paludin. But regardless, Nielsen gets his back to halfway. Yeah, he's been a really good returner for the juniors this year. Scored a couple touchdowns off them and makes another big gain there. And then in defense of the onside kick, returns like that, exactly why a lot more teams <laughs> are more, more likely to go for the onside kick in uh, untraditional circumstances. Yeah, well, you see it a lot more in the men's now with the onside kick, um, taking the returners out of the game and almost just giving them a couple more yards, but uh, stops the return and possible touchdown. First and ten, Rhinos haven't got a whole lot too far to go. Inside Stingray's territory, Lowe's kept it. Lowe's put a left foot step on. Now lowering the shoulders, Lowe's breaking tackles and he gets this inside the red zone in one play. We <laughs> Rhinos in no mood to be kept out of the game. Yeah, really big play there by Jack. Uh, making an important run, selling the zone option and getting all those extra yards after contact. Good one there. Might actually just be out. Ball might be on the 21. And that's the end of the quarter. And we're moving into the final six minutes of this round seven game between the first and second place ranked teams in the junior division. We're going to take a short break as we come into the fourth quarter. Big thanks again to Urban Extreme, our week seven juniors match day sponsor.
welcome back into the fourth quarter. There's the first play in front of you as you give to Hearn. Not a successful one. Gets it maybe a couple of inches past the original line of scrimmage. Actually, has lost a yard. Yeah, I think the inside run game has really struggled today for the Rhinos. Um, whether they look to go for a toss or maybe a speed option um, could be on the cards. Um, good to see Jack Lowe's run before. Um, he is traditionally more more suited to defense mm -hmm. uh, being a linebacker but in juniors he likes to get his hand on the ball and run as much as possible Clock ticking now final six minutes of this game of round seven second and 11. it's a give low wants to go deep he's got nielsen in the end zone nielsen has to come back for it and making a play was the man. He got pulled off earlier, Harvey Butler. Really good corner play there. Um, he gave Zach Nielsen the outside and was able to stay under the ball. If Zach had been able to work his way on the inside, I'd say we would dare say a touchdown. Well, last time they met, Zach Nil uh, sorry, Nielsen won the uh, the one on one matchup, wrestled the ball away from Butler. And it's time to measure of revenge. Yeah, it's a good little battle there. Third and eleven. They had one on one though. That's one of the few times they've gone deep long, the Rhinos. Let's see if they just go straight back to it. Some teams don't mind that, but Butler's backed off very deep here. And they've got the post, but it's in double coverage. Thurston's underneath it, as is another Stingray defender. They've got it in red zone intercept. They're going to bring it out. He could have just taken the knee there. And he'll lower his shoulder and take this all the way back to about the 25. I think that might have been Ezekiel Kautai again on his second intercept of the game. Yeah, huge play there by the defense. Uh, Jack throwing out of the pocket and under pressure and couldn't get a clear sight of where his receiver was and threw it straight to the DB. I was hoping he might be able to make a fulfilled effort there, but nonetheless, the intercept was more than enough and that the Stingrays, they're cheering. They think that could be the turning point for them. Yeah, it could very well be the game deciding play. Well, just, just under four minutes, apparently. The uh, Rhinos now, they need one heck of a defensive play here. They should be stripping at every ball. Mackay now, though, he's got plenty of space taken and a nice tackle there by Jack Lowe. Yeah, I know, if I know Jack, he'll be very frustrated with himself, so he'll be trying to do everything on the field now, trying to make all the plays he can. Well, right now, the most important thing for any ball carrier in the Stingrays is two arms on the football. Definitely. This is one of those situations where I actually don't fault a running back. They break to the open and they don't, <laughs> they don't open up their stride. They just keep two hands and they just get as many yards as possible. It's the safest option for sure. Definitely is a run. I'll give it again. There's a bit of a mix-up with the exchange about who's going to take it. Lowe's again on, on the tackle. Ends up being a pretty decent play for the Stingrays regardless. A couple of yards up the middle. Yeah, a little bit of miscommunication there. That can happen when you have the crossing backs. Um, but in the end, they still got yards, so I'm sure they'll take it. Especially if it is an option, not a designed carry there, and, and the quarterback has to decide where he keeps it or not. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a hard one to read if it is an option because you, you have to watch the fourth player that makes you give the option, but the two guys coming in front. Third down, Rhino sending a blitz. And they've got, oh no, this is Gru bouncing to the outside, but in pursuit is still Mavave. And that might bring it to fourth, and the Rhinos wisely use a timeout here. After a good tackle for loss. I think the same thing, just a little bit of miscommunication in the, in the handoff, and was able to bounce out, but just couldn't get past his man. And let's see how much moxie this Stingrays team has. Traditionally speaking, this is a punting situation, but in Gridiron Queensland, a few teams will just try to get the first down here and end the game like that. But yeah. I've heard punt team being called. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be a punt, and I think that's probably the safest option for them right now. Bearing the score, like force the runners to make as many yards as they have, if they can to get there and try and make the stop. Three twenty-three is the official time that we've been given. Runners with two timeouts left on my count in this half. Zach Nielsen at return. 
it'll be interesting to see if the punter's a little bit further back this time so he can get a better better kick on it without the pressure. Well, that's exactly right. Punt's supposed to be considered the safe play, but good on Queensland, where special teams are still kind of developing. Plenty of drama happens. Won't be the case in this situation, at least not with the punt. And Nielsen gets it, breaks the first tackle. Can't break, break the tackle of Sawada. Good special teams play by the, by the, uh, the Japanese exchange student. Yeah, it was a really good play. I think a little bit risky by Zach Nielsen there, trying to grab that last minute and almost had it stripped from him. Um, could have potentially been a poison call with the ball bouncing back towards the, the end zone where they were going. And so what has been really good going side by side. I, but my county hasn't missed a whole lot of tackles. Yeah, it looks like a young, pretty young good player. First down and 10. Rhino's now with three minutes, which is really enough time to try and tie this ball game up and potentially win it. Low, he's going to keep it and run with it. The Stingrays were aware of that. They send a blitz, that's sad. And they take him down for a loss. Yeah, I think that's just, uh, that was the wrong read there for that option play. I think he was just a little bit frustrated from himself earlier and he's um, going to try and work on his confidence back up so he can make the plays that need to be made in this situation. A loss of only a couple of inches on that play. Four wide receivers now. Trips out to the left. It's a low snap. Low. And this player will actually be blown dead. Someone might have been offside or did we see a false start? Uh, it's looking like it's a false start because they stopped the play. In case anyone was unabated to the quarterback. Could I get those snaps a little bit higher too from Robert Fowler? Now discussing what they saw. If you're a pass rusher on this defense, though, these are the moments you live for. No, oh, definitely. <laughs> you know, they talk about now pass rushers and, and football being closers um, to close out the game. That's why they get paid so much money in the NFL. First start on the offense there. Huh? On the 83, I think 83? I heard. Uh, is there an 83? There's a, there is an 83, so. At least I want to mix up in the numbers. Yeah. On a side note, it's good to see uh, a lot of the junior teams actually have uh, girls playing in the sport. Yeah, they to yes. get the development and help grow the women's game. Yeah, two of them this morning. And then a couple, uh, two in the, uh, the single race team line. And two for Rhinos. And two for the Rhinos. And here goes Jack Lowe with a call. He's in stride. He's got plenty of pace now. He's trying to get to the sideline desperately and plants it as if he was a winger scoring a try in the corner. <laughs> And not only gets the first down, but gets out of bounds. Great awareness and great ability there by Jack Lowe. Yeah, he is a league player. By, uh, that's where he's come from. And he actually spent uh, last year at the Cougars mm -hmm. um, playing for them. And he's actually had to miss a couple of games due to rugby league grand finals and stuff earlier in the season. So mm -hmm. yes, That's on. Obviously, the uh, rugby league team coming to a bit of a close tomorrow with the NRL grand final. Under two minutes now. I didn't get a two-minute warning, though. So we will maybe double-check on that. There's a motion we haven't seen yet by the Rhinos today, but it could actually just be correction of formation. Another low snap, but it is collected well by Low. Low throws over the middle. No one's there, though. Incomplete pass. Things get intense now. Yeah, it's getting... And that might be the two-minute warning. There it is, the official two-minute warning. We have two minutes remaining. In round seven, the Rhinos trail the Stingrays. We're currently undefeated, 12 points to 6. Yeah, this is gonna, this is, it's going to come down to this drive, and it's going to uh, come down what, what they have, the Rhinos, to be able to try and score a touchdown, and what the Stingrays will do. It'll be interesting to see if they send more guys back to try and cut out the pass, but then you've also got to worry about Jack Lowe's running game. So. Yeah, you kind of want to almost find an answer that does both, and you can argue that just blitzing, as like controlled blitzing from the outside, contained blitzing as they call it, might be the answer. Definitely. Stingrays will send four. It'll be a screen out to Nielsen. Nielsen is met immediately by Stingrays and only picks up a couple of yards on that play. Clock is still running. Surprised they haven't taken a timeout there. We've just still got two remaining. But maybe they're backing themselves to score and cut the time down as far as they can. Oh, there it comes now. There it is now. So they're probably going to save themselves 
a few ticks there. Yeah, probably would have lost about 10 odd seconds there. That's the second time out of the half, so they've got one remaining. I think the answer might be like you've got if, with the trips they've got backside of either Lockie Mathias and Harry Bradford opened and they're playing one-on-one -on -one coverage if they can beat their man that might be the way to go because you can see they're double coveraging on Zach Nielsen so they're really going to look for another answer to try and sort of stingrays off yeah, this will be really this shows where it's a team game here when it's not that hard for a defense to take away one option really but you just need the uh, the other pieces of your offense to sort of click into place Exactly. It's definitely been a great defensive battle by both sides. The Stinger is much in the first half. I was playing a lot of cover zero. This time, it looks like they are doing the exact same. They would rather pressure the quarterback than try to defend his pass. And that logic will almost pay off. Yes, it will. I thought for a second he broke through, but coming around through the back is number 35, Max Cusson. This is it, fourth down. No timeouts left for the Rhinos. They make this play, they stay alive. If they don't, it's game over. There it is. They're going to need one heck of a play. It's fourth. Well, they don't need to score on here, they just need to convert. And then they might have to go in there and run hurry up and, and uh, spike the ball to conserve some clock. But it's fourth and six. Exact same scenes as they, when they played last. Um, same, uh, it was only a two point difference then, but uh, Singer has got two sacks in a row and it ended the game with. Less than a minute on the clock, and it could be the same situation here unless runners can get that first down. So this is where two groups of personnel really have an opportunity to shine here, the defensive line and the, the safeties, the deep safeties <laughs> for the Stingrays. Well, I, I get the feeling that they're going to send them more and maybe just have one safety, maybe play a cover one look. Well, it's, it's what's worked for them so far, and Solomon Thurston now will be the deepest man for the Stingrays. Harry Bradford's one-on-one -on, -one on that edge again. Stingrays, oh, they've got a false start. So the job just got even harder for the Rhinos. Yeah, they were going for a hard count there, and the receivers jumped. Well, I'll get makes sense because if they could push that to a fourth and short, that makes the job a lot easier. I'll start taking some of your short option, short options in the passing game. And now it's fourth and ten. Looks like it's going to be trips to the boundary. So, called it. Trips to the boundary. All the receivers. Bar one to the right-hand side of the field. Joe Lowe's in trouble. He's bouncing around. He's got a couple options deep. He's going to run it himself, though. Has he got the first? He has. He's got the first. Can he hold on to the football? He's inside the 20. They need to get back to the line of scrimmage and spike this. Huge play there by Jack Lowe. It looked like there could have potentially been a missed block in the back there, but well, it looks like it could have been the side as well. Did the runners get away with one? Would have been... Marcel Holofalau? Yeah, there's, there is an argument there. Yeah. Just because he didn't go flying doesn't mean it's not illegal. But heck of an impressive effort from Jack Lowe there to use his feet to get the first down. Quick throw, he's hit as he's thrown. And it's incomplete. A flag's been thrown. Have we got roughing the passer? At least he got the ball out so it didn't get picked and stopped the clock. But it looks like it may have been roughing the passer call. Which would be a huge um, yardage game for the Rhinos in this situation right now. And they're waving the flag off. They're going to say it was a fair hit. I tend to agree mm. with them. Yeah, I think it was fair as well. I think it was just a great hustle and great desire from Max Cusson there. No Clay Matthews argument here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, it's hard to be a defender in the NFL nowadays. Oh, mate. it is. Yeah, getting penalised for hitting too hard. Yeah. There's down and 10. Really important for the O-line here to give Jack some time to be able to get that ball out. Well, I know he's generally aiming for the sideline, but Nielsen did score on an impressive slant on their first touchdown of the game. The first and only touchdown of the game. It's a low snap, picked up on the first bounce. Low is just going to try and use athleticism. He's got plenty of green in front of him. Can he even this up? He's touchdown. in there for a touchdown <laughs> for the runners. He's tied this ball game up and has an opportunity to win it with a two-point conversion here. Huge play. Huge play. Jack Lowe was a poor snap. He picked it up and just used his athleticism to get there. Um, that will grow his confidence, especially after the pick he threw in the red zone earlier. I think we'll be seeing the PAT team come out, to be honest. Well, 
that's most, what it looks like. Anthony most teams, yeah, most teams get down to the field using the passing game. That was all Jack Lowe's athleticism there, and the receivers blocking for him downfield. It's definitely a PAT. Well, they're going to go for the PAT. This one point here could win them the game. And they realise they've got too many players there. They've got to take. They've got substitution infraction, and they had ten players oh, yeah, on the field there. So that's going to move it back. Is this going to alter their decision? I think they're still going to take it. They're still going to take it with the extra five yards. We actually do this at practice a lot. Um, and at nights we give them pressure situations, whole team going at them. The well, Colton Juniors field goal kickers. Let's see if it pays off. Snaps good. Kick is up. Is it got the legs? No, it doesn't. Wide left. The Stingrays get enough on it to push it. Wide left. We've still got a drawn ball game. No flag, no flags on the far side. Hang on, we've got a flag on the far side of the plate. We're waiting for an They're official time check. Side. Maybe. Well, have we got an offside here? Oh, offside do. on the defense. Wow. The Rhinos will get another opportunity to win this game. All on Anthony, back to where it originally was. And all on Anthony Hearn's boot right here. Well, had that been five yards closer, that probably wouldn't have been successful, that last kick. Yeah, so exactly. Let's see if that makes a difference. They've changed their blocking a little bit here too. What's the fight? They've got a second chance here. They've got a second chance. Can the Stingrays, and it is a bad snap. Hearn's got it. The Stingrays are all over it. And the Stingrays this time, no flags. Once again, have stood tall and have kept this to a 12-12 ball game. Yeah, that's just a poor snap which forced it out there and Anthony Hearn didn't have much else that he could do there. Exactly right. Sometimes there's pressure, the pressure moments are huge and uh, you can practice things as much as you like. All you can say is better luck next time. It's another great battle between these two teams and they meet again in uh, three weeks, I think, so you know, for their final one before, <laughs> before, before the playoffs. playoffs so. It's almost fitting. To be honest, like a, a draw doesn't seem like an unjust no, it doesn't way to finish all. this game, but that wasn't the last play of the game. We haven't got an official time check. 58 seconds might be the case, but the, the Stingrays have got a couple of plays up their sleeve here, and they could uh, they could try to uh, change the game here in their last couple of plays. They don't have the, uh, the field goal kicking unit that the, the Rhinos do, but... I think the consideration here might be just kick it out, give up the flag, give away the penalty, and stop the return. No, not a bad idea. We just got the final call. That is 53 seconds is the official time remaining that will roll as soon as a returner catches the football and this will go out of bounds and that'll prevent the return I think that's probably the safest decision in that scenario still 53 seconds on the plate they're going to want a decision here whether they want to re-kick or if they're going to take and they're going to take it on the 30 they're going to take a re-kick here which is probably the, the right idea which is the right you more or less are trying to force the Rhinos to just keep kicking them into range. Yeah. The Rhinos have to chance their hand here. Almost a game of chicken here. It pretty much is, the <laughs> Rhinos. And because what happens here, the Rhinos now move back another five yards. They've got a re-kick. If they want to go to the same option, same decision will apply. The and Stingrays the re likely <laughs> then just get them to re-kick it again until they fo allow them a returnable opportunity. And this is where the Rhinos will have to decide here whether they're going to try and kick it deep or maybe squib kick it or just make some sort of awkward uh, try to kick some sort of awkward kick yeah I think they're going to try and kick it hard and low just <laughs> line judge out of position line judge just moving him back he's far he's forgot the penalty was applied <laughs> <laughs> and they'll no it's still going to be returnable this one will be caught on one bounce here the Stingrays now firing through and taken down in a nice tackle, but the Stingrays are inside Rhino territory. So we've probably got about 50 seconds, maybe 49 seconds left on the clock. Stingrays also have three timeouts. And they do have all three timeouts. So the result of this game right now is in the, the right arm of Kane and Tompkins. 46 seconds is the update we've been given. Kane and Tompkins. 
proven he can sling this ball downfield. Rhinos still opting. Oh, they've got two safeties down. They're not as deep as I thought they'd be. But they are playing too deep. Tompkins looking left, firing left to Terry. Terry is open and has caught it inside. That is a catch that moves him downfield, has kept the foot in bounds. Well done between those two. Huge play in double coverage. I think the DBs there got caught watching the ball and not watching their man, and that's what led to the catch. I didn't see it. Maybe we saw it on a replay on the wide, but and we might not get the opportunity here, but I think he, may have, he gave a bit of a head fake to try and get the safety to stay inside, and that's what allowed him to get that separation on the outbreaking route. I think the idea too is you can see they flipped Terry's side, taking him away from where he has been on the right side, putting him on the left to try and... Keep playing the game of cat and mouse. Yeah. Terry. Changed their DB on both sides. Well, the key, he's on the left-hand sideline right now. The rest of the receivers out to the right. One running back in the backfield. Start, they're looking for Terry. No, they're not. They're going back to the far side. Miscommunication between the receiver and quarterback, though. As Tompkins, he throws to the end zone, but no one's there. Was there not a false start by the guy there? It looked like there was a potential that he moved and turned around. Yeah. But, uh, I'll be honest, the calls have been give and take all game for me, <laughs> so I think that's probably one that <laughs> that is owed to the Stingrays. Oh, definitely. Second down and ten. Be interesting to know if Stingrays have a field goal unit. Yeah, I, I haven't seen them attempt one as of yet. Pass protection moves to the left, now back to the right. Three receivers out to the left. It's a quick throw. He's going for the fade to the right hand side. Incomplete. Important play there by the DB. It looked like number 18, which. Who was number 18? No, number 18. 18, no, not on your team list. 18, it must have been 16, which would have been Harry Bradford. Makes sense. Third down and 10. I think we're surely under 20 seconds by now. Big effort by Marcel. 24, my apologies. Is the, uh, another update coming through to us. 24 seconds. See, Third down and 10. You see Marcel Lafleur playing both ways all game today. Big mm -hmm. effort by the big boy there at, in the 70s there. 76, I believe. Yeah, hold it for now. 79. 79, there you go. Huge effort. And they will hand this ball off to Ruth. Grew. Trying to score. Another touchdown. He's spinning and turning, staying in bounds, though. The Stingrays will need to use a timeout. That's a heck of an effort there. By the running back and Connor Grew. Huge run. Huge run. Very important run. And he's been doing that all game. I didn't put a pass and break some tackles and score there. There's that spin move. <laughs> uh, Ian, one of the, uh, the managers for the coach side, he's clearly, for the Stingrass side, he's clearly fired up. 14 seconds remaining. 14. I get the feeling they're probably going to run it with the way their run game's been working lately. Why not? They've still got a timeout in the bag. Before this next play takes place, just another acknowledgement to our Week 7 sponsor, Urban Extreme Skiing Adventure Park. They will be uh, once again handing out two gift vouchers to the players of the games here for both sides. And oh, under pressure, pass. now rolling out, throwing back off his back foot. Too deep. Yeah, I was thinking it was a little bit of trying to throw the runners off. And a timeout now taken by the Stingrays. Their second only timeout. I thought they'd used one more, so they've got one more left after this. This one isn't so much to stop the clock, but to Just get their ducks in a row. Yeah. Because what we'd be down, probably down to 10, 9 seconds now, so. Eight seconds. Eight seconds. Third. Time we are hearing. <laughs> Clearly, people in the crowd willing the Stingrays to a to a victory here. And this is going to be down 
as one of the best, if not the best, junior game of the season so far. Oh, Glad definitely. it can be covered by LSB and G uh, GQTV. Brought to you by Urban right. Extreme Ski and Adventure Park. They don't have the two back, so it looks like it's potentially a pass, but you never know. So you've Gru's there to pass protect. He is. They've got two interior routes. Pass in the hands of Noah Hull. It slips off. It was right there, and it just fell out. Probably close to six seconds left now after that short play. Third down. Still enough time for two plays here, two quick passes. Provided they're not tackled short and inbounds. I think that I'd almost have the defensive side trying to work out a, a field goal scheme if you had to. I'll tell you what, with what, about six, seven, at the worst, probably five seconds remaining, I'd run here and use your final timeout. Yeah. And then we have a Pete Carroll situation on your hands. And that's it's what they'll do. They'll run the option. Oh, pass, pass ball out to Gru. Gru for the corner. Gru stopped short with One second remaining. Short. And he's down. Oh, and he's down. I think he's more down out of disbelief more than anything. Huge tackle there. Almost Jeez, who can stop Gru there? That close to the pylon. I'm not sure who Anthony made it. Anthony but... Hearn. It looks like Anthony Hearn. Anthony Hearn. And they're actually going to call the game, That's the game there. I thought for sure there would be a second remaining. That ends the game. We have wow. a tie, ladies and gentlemen, between Team 1 and Team 2 in the standings right now. The standings will remain that way. The Gold Coast Stingrays and the Brisbane Rhinos tied at 12 all here full time in week seven. Honestly, probably a fitting result. Uh, I think that is the fair result. That's kind of how both teams played. They deserve they deserve a point each. So, but that was a huge play at the end. Just that was <laughs> wow. Still in shock. He fell short. Well, mate, I want to get your opinion here. Uh, if you were to call player of the game for the Stingrays, mate. Who would you pick out? We had a couple there. We had uh, the number 15 who got the two intercepts. Zeke, Cal Tai, Ryan Gow made some play. Obviously, uh, the running back, Gru, is definitely worth a mention as well. Yeah, I think I think Terry was probably the man. He was beating his man every time um, in 82, I think it was. Luke Terry, yeah. the, uh, the Gold Coast Stingrays player of the game. And then for the runners, I think there's only one man we can probably say. Number 15, Jack Lowe, pulled some miracle stuff result, on today yeah. there. So... so we're going to roll to a couple of ads, but we will, before we do that, we'll thank you so much for your company all the way throughout the day. Three fantastic games of junior football capitalized and finished off with probably the best game, not only of, of the junior division, but probably up there in the year. Two fantastic games there from the two leading teams in junior division. Thank you so much to our sponsors. Thank you to you, mate. No and as well as you for, having me. for joining us and, uh, and you for your company. We will see you next week in week eight. Bye for now.